honest man can't make a profit in the land of thieves. <clears throat> I was just sitting here thinking about how superior I am on a philosophical level to almost everybody around me. It's stuff you don't want to hear about. I mean, you do, but you don't. But I need to get to the point. Hi, I am the Great One himself, founder of the Cynical Libertarian Society, C-Y-N-L-I-B-S-S-C.com on the interwebs. This is Anarchy Moment Podcast. I've been podcasting for 10 years, November 2014. 10 fucking years. Fuck you. This is part two of the If I Were a Femistatist series. And it's early, having some coffee. Mm. It's eight o'clock. That's what we call early around here, apparently. It's not actually that early. So in the first part, I didn't talk about any of the things I'm going to talk about in this one. I started setting the scene, the Alexandra Blue video, yada, yada, yada. And I also, between now and then, so between when I recorded the first episode of the If I Were a Feminist series and this one, I discovered some things I did not know at the time. Because first of all, I have not watched, nor do I intend to watch, the original Alexandra Blue video. I was basing everything I knew off of the response video I watched from this... I can't remember his username now, and there's I don't have a computer turned on. John something... John the something? And so anyhow, all of my response was based on... All of my analysis, rather was based on his response video. And obviously, those of us who are intellectually honest, <clears throat> what we know about that is we know that John is going to cherry-pick the parts of Alexandra's video that he responds to. And that's, that's not a slight. I mean, that's normal. I cherry-pick the parts of everything that I respond to, and so do you, and so does Obama, <clears throat> Excuse me. And so does your mommy, and so does this fucking police. And, you know, and so do the courts, and so does the random people walking the sidewalk. Right? We all cherry pick when we're going to disagree with something. We always cherry pick the parts we're going to disagree with. It's what we fucking do. And there's no point in disagreeing with the parts of something you agree with. So anyhow, the point is, I need more coffee. And the other point is that. I did not watch the entire Alexandra Blue video. And so my impression of the video is, of course, based on the parts of it I saw in John's responses. And from watching John's responses, I thought the catalyst for Alexandra's video was this man who looked at her in public and licked, her, licked his lips. Because she was really traumatized by this, that a man looked at her when she was in public. It was this old man, and he was creepy. He was like 50 years older than her. And so since she's 20-something, that means this guy was in his 70s. This 70-year-old man looked at her in public and licked his lips. And she was so traumatized by this. And I thought that was the catalyst for the video, was her being looked at. Then I discovered Aaron Clary. <laughs> Where have you heard that name before? Because I can't stop talking about him. Captain Capitalism did a response video to this. Somebody paid him through Asshole Consulting to do a response video to Alexandra's video. And he did. And by watching his response video, I learned that Alexandra's catalyst for making this video was not that a creepy man looked at her. That would turned out to just be one of her complaints. Her actual catalyst was she read an article in, I don't remember and I don't care, probably some feminist magazine, as if there's any magazine that isn't feminist, 
or some feminist website about how men are checking out and not interested in dating and not interested in getting married, which of course is true. And so it turns out that her video was a response to that and was blaming... Well, hold on. First, I need to drink a coffee. But second of all, I had to stop myself because my mouth was getting ahead of my brain because I started saying the word blaming. See, and unlike those of you out there who are stupid, I, I ridicule, deconstruct, insult. Tear down, piss on, wipe my ass with the opinions of statists who are wrong. But I don't need to lie about them. Right, so I was about to say she was blaming Sutton, and I didn't really don't know where I was going after that. And I was going to start saying things about her intentions that may or may not be true. May or may not be true. See, I don't have to do that, because when you're right, and I'm right, I'm always right, I've always been right, I will always be right. When you're right, like I am, you don't have to misrepresent what people who are wrong are doing in order to prove your point. So anyhow... Let me just stop that phrase. I don't know what her intention was behind doing the video, and it doesn't fucking matter what her intention was, because intentions don't matter. Right? I mean, if I go out and I start raping women, because some of you are saying, no, intentions do matter. And if you think that, you're inferior. Let's say I go out and I start raping women, and they catch me, and I say, why are you raping all these women? I say, well, my intentions are that I want to impregnate all these women, get them pregnant, they'll have more children, and then one of these children could possibly be the doctor who grows up to cure cancer, and then there would be no more cancer. And nobody would go, oh, wow, you have great intentions. You go ahead and keep raping women. Okay, so if you believe that intentions are significant, you're stupid, you're ignorant, you're a dumb fuck, and you're inferior, and it's that simple. Intentions do not matter. Only actions matter. I know that hurts your fucking feelings, but I don't care. I just don't fucking care about your fucking inferior goddamn feelings anymore. So anyhow, Alexandra left a comment on the captain's response video to her video saying something to the effect of, I'm watching this video for the first time. It's really hard for me to watch this, but your points are all true. And then, so go, go find, I'll, if I remember, I'll post a link to it in the show notes over on the website. So if you're seeing this on the YouTube, you know, if you're on the YouTubes, my links to other YouTube videos never appear in the show notes because I just copy the show notes from the website and put them into the YouTube. And since the YouTube videos are in beds, they never go over. I could maybe figure out a way around that. Maybe if I copied from the text. But but who cares? The point is, if you when you hear me on the cast, if you're on the YouTube and I'm talking about YouTube videos will be in the show notes, you got to go over to the website to find the fucking YouTube videos. Sorry, guys. That's just how it is. There's only, since I only have so many hours in the day. And since I'm not getting paid to do this, and since I'm doing it for fun, deal with it. All right. If you go to the Cappy's response video, so after she says this, there is this assorted, there, there, last I looked, there's like 50 comments in response to her comment, which run the range of, yeah, whatever, you're still a dumb bitch, all the way down to these simpering sissies who are writing things like, what? You watch Aaron Clary's channel? Oh, you're so amazing. Plus 10 points for you. I'm just like, Jesus Christ. Like, first of all, boys, let me say something to you fuckers. This is part of why women, especially young women, are as fucked up as they are. Because of the way you kiss their asses. Think about this. When somebody leaves... when a comment on a YouTube video, the response you're going to type back to them, think about this. So the person is, is some chick that you think is, and by the way, I so I'm getting ahead of myself, but 
I looked at another video on her channel and she didn't have makeup on. I mean, with makeup, you know, Captain Capitalism that he said, oh yeah, because I haven't really talked about, have I talked about that? I can't remember now. Did I, wait, did I see the Cappy Cap before I did the other one? God damn it, I can't remember. My fucking time, I swear to God, time is not linear. It just blurs. If I could measure the tachyon emissions in this room, time fluctuates for me. So the captain in his video said that Alexandra was a 5.5, and I think I rated her about a 5 also. I've seen her in another video without makeup. She's not even a 5. She's a 4. Maybe 4.5 if you close one eye and squint with the other. The girl's not attractive. Anyhow, when you're going to leave your comments on the YouTube and you're commenting and you think you're commenting to some cute girl and so you want to say something like, oh, that's plus 10 points for you. Think about this. If you wouldn't write that comment to an ugly you know, 70-year-old creepy guy who's licking his lips, don't write that comment to a woman. And I know it's tempting to go on the YouTube and you see some cute chick and you want to kiss her ass and everything. Believe me, I've had the temptation before also to write to some YouTube chick and say, you are the hottest thing alive. I want to marry you. And then I resist because you can't think with your dick all the fucking time. All I'm saying is, guys... Stop leaving these fucking kiss-ass comments these women telling them about how amazing... I, no, she doesn't get plus 10 points, whatever the fuck that means, because she's watching a goddamn video on YouTube. All right? Stop treating these women like they're these fucking princesses who need your lips on their ass all the fucking time. That's part of why they have the goddamn attitude problem. They're equal. Don't carry heavy objects for them. Do not get up and give them you. Ch Some bitch looks at you and goes, can I have that seat? Tell her no. You need this seat like a fish needs a bicycle. Shut up, bitch. Anyway. Aaron, in his response video, also pointed out that, he, he told this really well, he pointed out that men will pretty much have sex with anything if it's attractive, and they don't really care what it thinks. But then Aaron says something to the effect of, he said this really well, something to the effect of, sometimes you're talking to a woman and she's attractive, but she's so dumb that something in the back of your brain says to you, if my DNA and her DNA mix together, the child that results from this is going to be so stupid it won't be able to survive. And it scares you away. Which is true. <laughs> oh, God. is happening. But then this is what I think is the really funny part. Aaron says, this has happened to me about three times in my life, and Alexandra would be number four. And... I don't know how that has only happened to Aaron three times in his life. Maybe he meets higher quality women than I do or something. But I can t let me tell you what. The number of women that I have said I'm not having sex with her because she's too stupid, I would easily, for me, put that number in the 30s, mid-30s at least, I have, especially lately, I, I, I have found that a 45-second conversation with a woman that, from a distance, I thought was cute and fuckable, and I'd be like, yeah, I'd go out with her. 45 seconds of conversation, and I'm done. Which just goes to show something I've said for a long time, and I'm going to repeat it now. For you women out there who can't shut the fuck up about your free birth control and your right to your body and... All this other fucking shit, you know, abortion and birth control and birth control and abortion. Your best form of birth control is just simply your personality. Just be yourself. You know, like you always tell men, well, just be yourself. No, really, if you don't want to get pregnant, just be yourself. Because again, Aaron's right. Most men, there is a thing in the back of their brains where if a woman is dumb enough... They will get the fuck away from you. They will recognize, I cannot make a baby with this woman because that baby will be retarded. She's that fucking dumb. 
Just be yourself, and trust me, no man is going to want to have sex with you. When a man comes up and starts talking to you, just start off tell, tell him about the patriarchy and how it's holding you down. Tell him about how guys are creepy. Trust me, this will keep men, this will keep you from getting pregnant. I promise you. So anyhow, back to the story before I get to my notes. This is all the stuff I found out after I made the notes that I'm going to do this podcast from. So now, Alexandra is... Calling, what is she calling herself? I already forgot. Human something. Anyhow, the point is, she claims she's had a change of heart. and She's recognized the era of her ways. And she made a video where she wasn't wearing any makeup, and you can clearly see that she's a four. She made a video in which she says, I made this video, dear men, and I regret it, and I... I was wrong, and now I want to make it up. And so here's what I'm going to... And I'm listening to all this shit, and I'm going, okay, she just smells money in the water. Because I don't for a minute believe that she's had some fucking awakening. I mean, she's this little 20-year-old journalism student who's just shallow as fuck. Okay, she has not had an intellectual awakening. I'm not buying it for a minute. Neither are a lot of other people on YouTube because obvious. Again, just under, if you go watch that video, read the comments underneath it. Again, the comments run the range of, "Oh, Alexandra, I want to lick your butt. I want to be your personal puppy." <laughs> All the way to there's this one guy who's on there has this great username on YouTube. It's something like, it's something like privileged cisgendered white male who is responsible for oppression or something. is fucking hilarious. So the comments run the rain gambit from kissing her ass all the way up to people like me who are just calling bullshit and shenanigans. So I'm calling shenanigans. She hasn't had some kind of intellectual awakening. What she's had is a realization that she can get attention and money. So in her video, she announces that she wants to make a video about men's issues, shall we say. And again, I don't remember exactly, so I'm I'm operating from memory. And I'm not trying to misrepresent, because again, I don't have to misrepresent my opposition. Right? We don't, I don't have to misrepresent communism. Communism is bad. I don't have to misrepresent Obama. Obama's a sociopath and a murderer. Right? I don't have to misrepresent people. When you're right, you don't have to do that. She wants to make a video about how men are whatever, whatever, whatever. The important part is, what is it women do? They go through life trying to gather resources so they can spend those resources. She wants to make this video, and by she wants to make this video, what she means is she wants men to send video clips of themselves talking about whatever, their feelings, their problems, their issues, how oppressed they are, whatever. So she wants you to send her video clips, and she wants you to send her money so that she can make this movie, this video, this documentary, whatever it is. She wants to make a documentary, and so you need to send her money, and you need to go ahead and make video clips for the movie and send them to her. So I'm thinking, I want to write a book. So if all you guys out there, if you'd send me some money, and then also, if each of you could write a chapter for the book and then send me your chapters, that'd be great. And I'm going to make a, I'm going to write a book. Anyway, that's where we are. She's pretending she's had this change of heart and she's getting resources from a bunch of beta. And who's going to send this chick a video of them whining about men's issues or some shit? 
Wait, really? Uh, I'm, a, I'm a man and I'm cisgendered, but nobody understands that I have feelings too. And I need people to care. I mean, what the fuck? We, we are men. We recognize that we are... We, ha we recognize that we have responsibility and accountability and nobody else does. Who the fuck? You know, yeah, I'm a man and I recognize that I'm expected to always make the first move with women. I'm feeling really oppressed by this. I mean, shut the fuck up. I don't like it either. But you fucking deal with it, man. It reminds me, speaking of making the first move with women, I did make the first move with a chick. Don't We'll see how that comes out. I'll keep you posted because, you know, a while back I did my podcast where I talked about all the women that I've attempted to boink lately and how flaky and dumb they all are. So anyhow, I got another, and, and again, I've talked about how I've never, ever, every woman I've ever had sex with, I've never known her phone number until after we've had sex and how getting phone numbers is women or giving out phone numbers is the way women blow people off nowadays. Anyhow, I got a phone number from another chick. We'll see what happens. I, I'm at the point, you know. Again, it's I. My expectations are zero, but yeah, whatever. You'll hear about it one way or the other. Either she'll be a flaky bitch, and I'll say, "Hey, look, another flaky bitch," or I'll have sex with her. In which case, I'll post the video on the website. Ha! Just kidding. I would do it. As long as my face was anyway, I need a wide angle lens to get all of my dick into it, but sure. Okay. If I were a feminist, part two. The responses to what I know about Alexandra's video. I also want to point out here's a here's a woman thing. In the video, in her video, when she talks about how this creepy guy looked at her and licked his lips. This is also another female thing. Do you, do, does she realize that this creepy guy who looked at her doesn't even remember that she exists? And yet here she is in this video on YouTube still obsessing over him. I mean, I've talked about this before on the cast. I was cleaning out my email Address, email addresses, email account. And I found emails from girls that I was apparently spending time with, possibly even had sex with. And I say, because I don't even remember who these girls are. I'm like, I'm reading these emails where we're writing back and forth. And it's like, I don't even remember. I mean, at all. I have no memory. I'm looking at these names. It's like Julie or whatever. And I'm going... Who the fuck is this? I have no memory at all. None. Zero. No memory of these women. And there were there's like four or five, as far as I remember, because we, we see how my memory is, don't we? But I mean, it's like women, and this has got to be a woman thing. It's like they remember this stuff. And they because you, have you ever had an argument with a woman? And then like three years later, she can tell you word for word what was said in that argument, where you were standing, where she was standing, what clothes you were wearing, what clothes she was. She has like this perfect memory. Women have this thing where they form like these perfect memories of anything in their life that is traumatic to them. And then they relive it over and over and over in their mind. And like she's, she was in this grocery store, if I remember the story right. And if I don't, I don't give a fuck. I just don't give a fuck because I don't have time to watch her fucking video to, to get the nuances of her fucking trauma, okay? But she's in this place, this public place, and this creepy 70-year-old man looks at her and licks his lips. And she's so traumatized by this that she just rehearses it over and over and over in her mind. And she relives this moment over and over and over. And she goes on YouTube and talks about this moment to record it for posterity. And he's forgotten that he, he doesn't even remember any of this. He looked at her 
And let's say he looked, let's say that he licked his lips because he has really low standards and he would be willing to have sex with a woman who is a four. He looked at her and he licked his lips and he thought, my standards are really low, I would tap that shit. And like 17, 18 seconds later, he forgot that she even existed. And this is not for the femistatist. This women in general, all women in my experience are like this. They take the worst moments of their lives and just relive them over and over and over and over. Girls, men don't do that. I mean, I'm mean, not saying we're immune to it. We can, but the point is manly men. On And I... Getting out of the rut where you do that is what puts you on the path to being what we will call an alpha male, right? That's part of what meditation is for and yoga and exercise is to take your mind off of these ruminations. And this is why women have these ruminations because all they do is sit around all day staring at their cell phones. That's not going to take your mind off the ruminations of the bad thing that happens to you. In fact, it just provides a vehicle for you to relive it over and over and over as you tell all your friends. I can see this Alexandra cunt on her fucking cell phone texting all of her friends to tell them a creepy man just looked at me. I'm so traumatized. A creepy man looked at me. She probably got on Facebook and posted a creepy man looked at me in the grocery store. I'm so creeped out. Ugh. If you want to make progress in your life, if you want to stop being a femistatist, get your shit together, you have to move past all of this obsession and rumination about every bad thing that's ever happened to you in your life. Shit happens to me all the time. I mean, shit's happened to me lately. Shit happens to me every week. And when it hits me, I'm like, ah, fuck. And then I move on, and then I forget about it. Because you've got to, you can't fucking relive this shit all the time. Welcome to the self-help podcast. All right, anyway. So, she also talks about in her video, if we men only knew what it was like to be a woman. Now this one's been, this has been just dealt with so many fucking times. I'm going to try to keep this short because there's no need for this to be long because it's been dealt with so many times. You women who think you've got it so fucking hard, you have no idea. I would love for you women to go through your life as a goddamn man. I would love for you to find out what it's like not to have people do shit for you, not to have people get out of your way, not to have people pick things up for you, not to have people be nice for you. For you to have to be responsible for yourself, for you to have to make the first move. I love how women... Yeah, so anyway... In this video, can I jump, am I going to jump ahead? I'll jump ahead. She's talking about how it's, you shouldn't try to meet women on the street and just walking up to them. You should meet women in clubs. Right. First of all, she's too dumb to know that the people who own clubs are using women to make money. That's why Ladies Night exists. You get all these chicks in there for free and give them half price drinks. And then you get all these men, therefore, who are desperate for sex, pay $10 cover charge and buy these inflated price drinks in order to meet these women. So she's sitting you know, there going, well, you should meet, don't, don't talk to women on the street. You should meet women in clubs. That's where you're supposed to meet women. Not having enough sense to know that she's being used by these capitalist pigs who own these clubs because she hates capitalism. Left-wing statists always hate capitalism. And from her perspective, I can see the appeal of this, right? You go to this club, you get in for free, you get a half-price drink, and then you just stand there with your girlfriends making fun of all the creepy men around you waiting for men to come up and approach you. And so that's, that's a life of ease and luxury. Gosh, you know what, honey? I would love to spend a month being a woman. I would love that. 
if there were a way to do it, I'm not going to get like a transy cranny operation or some shit, but if there were like this way to just switch brains and bodies, honest to God, I'd probably never go back. I would love to be a woman, to just go through life getting discounts and having everybody bring me stuff. I would like, Alexandra, for you to try spending a month as a man. I would like you to have to fuck it. And then, ooh, men make more money. Now, first of all, we've already done that. No, men don't make more money. But as I've said, men should make more money. Men should make more money for the same job than women do. Why? Well, let's see. Women get in the club free. They get half price drinks and they don't even buy their own drinks because the reason they're there is for men to buy drinks for them. Women get free birth control from Obamacare, but men don't get free birth control. If a man wants a vasectomy, he's got to pay for it himself. It's not covered. Okay, Men have to pay $10 to get in the club, buy drinks at full price, and buy the drink for the woman. So yes, <clears throat> do not misunderstand what I'm saying. I am not saying men make more money than women do for the same work. I'm not saying that. I am saying men should make more money than women do for the same work. If you have a man and a woman with the exact same qualifications doing the exact same job, the man should make more money than the woman because the man has more expenses. Men, most of the money men make ends up going to women, directly or indirectly. We pay it as taxes, which goes into welfare, WIC. Do you notice how there's WIC, women, infants, and children? There's no MIC, men, infants, and children. It all, our tax money, all ends up going back to women, going back to welfare moms, food stamps, all this other shit. When men go out, we're always expected to pay, we're expected to buy you drinks, uh, alimony, child support. Most of the money men make ends up being funneled back to women. Men should make more money. You can fucking hate me all day long. I'm right. I'm, prove me wrong. Show me the place where women are paying alimony to men. Show me where women are paying child support to men. Show me where women are buying men drinks. Show me where men get in for free and women pay a $10 cover charge. Show me these things. Prove me wrong. You can, you can play or hate all fucking day. Call me names. Call me names. Don't care. You have no fucking evidence. You can't prove me wrong because I'm right. And on top of all that, after Alexandra, who's spending a month as a man, has paid all this additional money, I want to see her go approach men. I guess she'd approach women if she's beating men. I just want to see the roles reversed. I want to see women approaching men, coming up to men and facing rejection. You bring it on, honey. You act like you've got it so fucking hard. You've got it so fucking hard because you have titties. Oh my God, what a burden. I honestly got, I don't know what fucking burden you women are bearing. I, I really don't. I honestly got, I don't have a fucking clue when you women act like you've got it so goddamn hard and you're so fucking oppressed. I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. Your asses are kissed in this society. You get your free birth control. You get custody of the children, no questions asked. You get Alamo. My God, there's women out there who are getting fucking child support from men where DNA testing has proven those men are not the biological fathers of their children. And those men are still being forced to pay child support. You, I mean, God damn it. What is it that you fucking femistatist cunts out there could possibly want that you're not getting? What more can you possibly fucking want? There's this entire statist system in existence that, that does nothing but take resources away from cisgendered white men who work for a living and give it to you so that you can take your children that you've had by, you don't even know who the father is, and put them in public schools and public daycare and then go whore around and then go to the grocery store with your fucking welfare and your goddamn food stamps. I mean, what fucking more can you ask for? I'm sure there is more that you could want. Oh, that's right. You don't want people to look at you when you're in public because they're creepy. There's a creepy man looking at me.
Okay. 35 minutes into this and I've barely started my notes. So honey, you need to understand men don't get to do what you do. As a woman, you can just you go on YouTube and you stand there and you try to look you put on a bunch of makeup and you look cute and you act helpless and you get resources. Just like with this video, you want to make a video about men's issues. So you go on YouTube and you just try to look you didn't look cute because you're a four. You didn't put makeup on. And why the fuck didn't you put makeup on for the video? Are you st I mean, so she's not even good at this. She's not even good at doing what women do, which is looking cute and helpless and begging for resources. Because in the video, she did look helpless, but she didn't have enough sense to put on makeup. But nonetheless, she will get resources. As a man, I can't do that. I can't go on YouTube and put on some ink on there and go, Oh my God, hi, I'm the great one. And yeah, and I really want to make a video. And so, will you send me money? Cause like, I really want to make a video, but I have a journalism degree and like, um, yeah, like, uh, totally. I can't go on YouTube and look cute and act helpless and just get resources for free. That doesn't work for a man. That only works for you, honey. But oh, God damn it, you are so fucking oppressed. You're so oppressed. Oh, the oppression. A man, a creepy man looked at you when you were in a public place and he licked his lips. Oh my God, you are fuck. You are oppressed. There should be a law. And also as a woman, you don't have to have credibility. You don't have to have evidence. People say, oh, she has titties. I'll just believe anything she says. Again, men don't get this privilege. I would love to see you make your way through life without the ability to assume people, to have people assume you are credible simply because you have titties and then give you resources for free simply because you're helpless. If you lost that ability, you would fucking starve to death in the gutter. As I look at my notes, the one other thing I need to mention about clubs is why do... Aaron Cleary said the same thing. I don't go to clubs. Aaron says the same thing. He doesn't go to clubs. Clubs are loud. You can't talk to people. And he didn't mention this. I have always mentioned this. Clubs are also dark. That's why it's loud and dark in a club so that you can't see the person you're talking to so that the women look more attractive. All women look more attractive in the dark. Trust me on this one. And if you're like me, if you're fantastic and amazing and have a giant cock, you're <laughs> I'm I am not a pretty boy, right? If you're if when you come with men, you can pick up girls at a club if you're a pretty boy. And I don't mean if you're a good looking guy, clubs probably work for you. I am not an excessively good looking guy. I have to meet women based on my personality and my conversation skills, and I know some of you are saying personality what no really i have one i have to meet women with personality skills and personality skills don't display very well in a dark loud nightclub so no men should not go to clubs in order to meet women some men can do that but the, honest to god those are those are going to be the pickup artist alpha male types that alexandra's whining about in her fucking video all right, anyway, back to the notes. Do you always notice how with femistatist, they always talk about how they want choice? You know, choice this, choice that, a woman should have a choice. But you notice how choice always ends up meaning getting free resources from other people? I should have choice in birth control, which in, translates into I should get free birth control paid for by somebody else. I just want to throw that out. All right. I'm reading my notes. I'm thinking if I want to rehash this. Look, I've talked about this before. The men, are masculine element of people is to be active. The feminine aspect of people is to be passive. The, there should be a balance between the two. Femistatists lack the balance. Femistatism is what happens 
because all men and all women have masculine and feminine aspects to them, right? We are all active in some ways, we're all passive in other ways. When you get to the point where you're going completely active all the time, that's where you become a fucking asshole. And that's really the right term for it. I, I don't know what the term for it is yet. I need to work on that. But when you shift to the spectrum where you're passive all the time, that's where femistatum, femistatism begins. When you look at the femistatist, they're all passive. Femistatists are these women and men who are just sitting around. They want everything done for them by the state. They want everybody else to be accountable for their needs. They want everybody else to be responsible for their needs. All they do is they wind their way through life. These are the people who can't deal with the fact that a creepy man looked at them in public. Okay, so as you go through your life, you've got to seek balance between being active and being passive, between being responsible and being blown by the winds. And of course, the feminist status like Alexandra whine about, you know, again, she, this man looked at me, yet how much time does, and she spends a lot of time on makeup, because again, if you watch one of her videos where she has makeup, and then you watch the video where she doesn't have makeup, you can see she spends a lot of time on makeup in order to get from being a four to a five. And she spends all this time putting all these videos on YouTube, and she's got an Instagram, and I'm sure she does selfies. On, so, so women, Yes, women are pretty much constantly, not all of them, I've got, I've met a few women who actually don't have like Facebook, Instagram, any, they're not attention whoring online at all. Girls, let me tell you something. That's actually really attractive. If I go to look you up on Facebook and you don't have a Facebook account, or if we're talking and you're like, yeah, I don't have Facebook and you don't have, that, your ability to go through life without attention whoring on the internet, it's actually really attractive to, I shouldn't say to men, because I can't speak for all men, okay? It's a really attractive to me. I think that would be attractive to most actual real men to know that you don't have to spend that much time in your life attached to your cell phone, posting on Instagram and Facebook and shit. So I'm just throwing that out there. It's a little free tip for finding yourself a quality man. Get off the fucking internet. Because the only men who are gonna, well, never mind. I'm not. I'm not even going there. That's can I, I? I'm 45 fucking minutes into this. I need to focus. <laughs> this is what happens when I don't have adult supervision. <sighs> okay, so the f women spend a lot of time attention whoring. But the femistatists are the ones who get upset when people look at them. So these femistatists, they're on Facebook, they're posting all these selfies, they're doing their makeup, and they're wearing the revealing clothing, and they're making their YouTube videos, but oh my God, a 70-year-old man looked at me. Well, yes, somebody looked at you. You're going through your entire fucking life attention whoring. Yes, the result of all of your attention whoring is that somebody might look at you. Again, it illustrates the disconnect that femistatists have when it comes to understanding that what happens to them is a reflection of their behavior. Right? If you attention whore all the fucking time, people might look at you. Now, normal people understand that. But femistatists don't get it. This creepy man looked at me. Well, Jesus fucking Christ, you went out into public. I go out into public all the time. If people in public look at me, I don't get my fucking feelings hurt. I'm not traumatized by this. I'm in a public place. There's other people there. There's light bouncing off of my body and striking their eyeballs. Other people are going to look at me. This is not a traumatic event in my life. And this is another reason why you femistatists are not my equals. Okay? Yeah, men, we're equal. No, no, you're not. Just let me repeat my ad nauseum. You are inferior. You are inferior. When you are traumatized because a man looks at you in public, you are not my motherfucking equal. Shut up. Shut up. Shut the fuck 
up, you goddamn femistatist cunt. You're not my fucking equal. Shut up, crawl under a rock, and fucking die, and please get your DNA out of the fucking gene pool. I feel sorry for this woman's kids. I don't think she has kids now, but sometime in the future, she's gonna. I feel sorry for any kids she will ever have. Okay, again, what is femistatum? Fem femistatism. <laughs> what is femistatism? What is statism? Did I not do a four-part series? Femistatism is fear, 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 fear. This is all fear-driven. A man looked at her in the grocery store. She was afraid. There ought to be a law. It's all fear-driven. Now, John, in his video, and he is analyzing the creepy man looked at me in the grocery store part, he came up with a thesis that I find very interesting. Now, if you've listened to my cast before, you know that my general thesis on, because God knows I've talked about women being offended, or femistatist, excuse me, trying to use correct terms. I've talked about femistatist being offended because men look at them, or men talk to them, or men hit on them. And my thesis on this has always been that the main reason for this, well, there's two, of course, number one is fear. Right, femistatists are afraid of men. They're afraid of everything. They're total, they're afraid of life. That's why they're statist. But also, the femistatists don't have social skills. They simply, and again, this goes back to what I talked about. You know, women are. Eh, we can't. Women have better communication skills than men. Oh, really? Then why at Reddit can people no longer negotiate for their salaries if women have such great communication skills? Because you don't. So I've always said femistatists don't have communication skills. They don't have interpersonal skills. They don't have social skills. They don't understand how to interact with real, live human beings anywhere other than on the internet and on their iPhones. I'd love to, to get some statistics about... Oh, God. Hang on a second. I have to check my cell phone. I would love to get some statistics about I, I watched a video on YouTube a while back is a guy with uh, talking about social media marketing stuff like that he was bring anyway he showed a bunch of heat maps of cities showing where the iPhone users live versus the Android users and iPhones are predominantly found in the richer neighborhoods. There's a shock. And Android phones are predominantly found in the poorer neighborhoods. Which, you know, again, I, iPhones and Apple devices are a status symbol of the elite. There's no surprise there. I would love to get a breakdown of women who identify themselves as feminist and find out what percentage of them have iPhones as opposed to Android phones. I would be willing to bet it's mostly iPhones because it's elitist. All right, I have no idea how I got there from where I was. Oh, social skills. The average femistatist has no social skills and cannot interact with another human being unless there's an iPhone between her and the other human, right? To interact with another person in person is really difficult for them because they're just sitting there the entire time they're the entire time they're talking to another human, especially if it's a man, right? They're afraid, they're thinking about the patriarchy, they think he's trying to oppress her, all this other shit, and they can't function because they have no goddamn social skills and they're terrified all the fucking time. John in his response video presented another thesis that the reason men win oh God. I'm refilling the coffee cup there okay here we go we're kind of, we're on the home stretch sort of God, this is gonna be like an hour long his thesis is that femistatist don't want to interact with men 
whom the femistatist views as being below her station. That the femistatist does not want to interact with a man from who cannot provide for her resources that she wants. And I heard that and I thought, you know, I think he's on to something there. Because if a woman perceives, I mean, again, this, this, is, this is logical. This is common sense tells us this, right? If a chick looks at a man and sees some kind of value in that man, she's going to want to talk to him. And here's, here's another difference between men and women is that, yeah, men are the same way. I'm walking down the street. I see some girl. If she doesn't look like she has some resources that I want, namely sex, I'm not going to talk to her. And as a man, I have no expectations of a woman coming up and initiating conversation with me. Right, so that doesn't ever happen. So it, 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 it's, it's somewhat irrelevant to the point because it's a situation that does not happen. Right? No woman ever comes up and talks to a man unless she wants something from him. No man talks to a woman unless he wants something from him. So now, with femistatist, you're the man. You walk up to a femistatist. You don't know she's a femistatist. And you start talking to her. If she does not perceive you as having some resources that she wants, she will, of course, classify you as creepy. You're a creeper because you don't have anything she wants. You are below her station. You don't meet her standards. I think you can't argue with this. So now the question becomes, or not the question, The observation is this. All of us are going to... I man, Sorry, I mean, it's we are men. We do the same thing. If some, like, fat chick, we, we wouldn't go talk. Again, it, 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 you can't, almost can't make the balance because chicks don't come up and talk to men. It doesn't fucking happen. Again, this is why, Alexandra, try spending your fucking time as a man, okay? Try going through life without people of the opposite sex coming up and talking to you. Find out what it's like to have to do all the fucking work. All the fucking work. Literally, and find out what it's like to pay the majority of the taxes that go to the fucking welfare system. Find out what it's like to be expected to work longer and not get time off because you're fucking, you know, it's that time of the month or your kid got it. I remember when I worked, oh God, here we go. I remember when I worked at CSU and we had this woman and she's a single mother. You know, it's like, oh, I, I, I have to leave work early today because my son has to go to the principal's office. Like, really? Your son is so fucking stupid he can't find the principal's I mean, you get to leave work early because your son has to go to the principal's office. Men can't get away with that shit. I would love to see you fucking feminist cunts try living a month as a man. And actually having to be fucking responsible and accountable and stay at work late and show up early and pick up heavy objects and open jars and pay more taxes and fucking get attacked on all fucking fronts by a bunch of fucking greedy, selfish, feminist cunts. I would love to see you do that. I'd love to see you have to fucking walk up to men and goddamn face reach and have men be able to laugh in your face and call you creepy and all this other shit. So fuck you. So anyhow, the point is, when a man approaches a woman, feminist, feministatist, cunt, just normal woman, whatever, I mean, it's true. Now, you, you, this is where you have the degrees. Like, normal women can politely just fend off in advance and get on with their life. But the feministatist, because of her arrogance, because of her self-centeredness, her selfishness, because she views, and this is the thing too, being a femistatist, I think, enhances your opinion of yourself, and thus you see everyone as being below your station. Mm -hmm. 
add to that the fear, right? Because this guy might, this, there's this creepy guy licking his lips. He might rape me in the grocery store. I'm so afraid. Add to that the fear And you get the kind of behavior you get from Alexandra going on YouTube. The cre creepy guy looked at me. So yeah, John's on to something here. Women brain, brain thinking, brains processing. Hold on. And again, this said it before. Sorry, you know, if you this guy has got a lot of silence, fuck you. That's because I'm doing this thing called thinking. This is not a podcast where we run on autopilot. We the fuck am I? What am I schizophrenic now? Actually, I am sometimes. Shut up, both of you. All right. Anyway, <laughs> I'm trying to think. God damn it. When a femistatist describes a man as creepy, what she is saying is, this man is below my station. This man is not good enough to talk to me. And yet, and see, that's okay. For femistatists to declare that men are creepy and not good enough to talk to them is totally fine. Yet, femistatists attempt to give men shit because we judge women by their appearance and we, say, and we sit and we say things like, Alexandra is a four. If she puts on enough makeup, she can be a five, right? So see, when men do that, we're pigs, we're evil, we're mean, we're judging people on what they look like. But when femistatists declare that a man is creepy because he doesn't have any resources that she wants, that's totally okay. Again, this shows us how our society is so female centric all at the same time having to listen to these femistatists complain about how oppressed they are okay I need to move on did that did that I've really done that I mean again the fear the uncomfort femistatum is femistatism is driven by women are a Femistatist, excuse me, not women. Femistatist are people who are afraid of being uncomfortable. Again, a man looked at her and licked his lips. Oh my God, she was uncomfortable. He's creepy. I got to talk about this in my video. This is men are broken. I'll just fuck you, honey. We are not broken because you're uncomfortable. You are uncomfortable because you're broken. Personality, I did that. Yep, talked about that. Boom. Hey, look at that. I've covered all my notes. So if I were a femistatist, it'd be so great. I'd be able to just go through life with no responsibility. I would have resources given to me. When people looked at me in public, I could be creeped out and I could blame them and I could insult them. I could go on YouTube and I could make videos talking about how dumb they are and how they should be buying me drinks in clubs because that's where you're supposed to meet women where you can't meet women on the street. Oh, if I were a femistatist, it'd be so wonderful because I'd have no responsibility, no accountability. I'd just be able to go through life getting my free birth control and getting all my subsidies from the government. I could get knocked up by a couple of different men the way things are going, I could probably get two guys paying child support for the same baby. That would be sweet because then I'd have double the child support. Then you throw in my wick and my food stamps and my fucking welfare. I'd be living, I could go get some tattoos. And I could post selfies of myself with my tattoos on my Instagram. Then I could get knocked up again and go get an abortion and post a picture of myself in the room about to get the abortion and be like, yo dogs, I'm about to get an abortion, but I'm still sexy. Cause wow, that would be great. If I were a femistatist, I could live in that world of childishness and responsibility and emotional retardation and having no social skills. But unfortunately, I'm a heterosexual white man who works for a living. I just don't get that privilege.